<laughs> you nailed it. Was that disgusting? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you can't take me anywhere. <laughs> investigating pretzels and in particular we're going to be looking at different types of dough and how we are able to pretzel them and the different doughs have different gluten content we have high gluten content using bread flour we have uh, low gluten content with cake flour and for no gluten we are using no gluten flour hi i am julie pollock and i am an associate professor of chemistry at the university of richmond Hi, I'm Kevin Aptowitz. I'm a professor of physics at Westchester University and a visiting scholar at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm Sudi Pagarwala. I'm a yeast geneticist and a synthetic biologist at a company, Ginkgo Bioworks, up here in Boston. And I'm really excited to be talking about how yeast contributes to the chemistry of pretzel making. My daughter is gluten-free. So unlike my childhood, her childhood is not filled with Philadelphia soft pretzels. Fun fact, Philadelphians, I think, eat 12 times more pretzels than the average American. Uh, so we eat a lot of pretzels. And so I'm excited with this episode. Am I able to make my daughter, who's 11, a gluten-free soft pretzel? We have three different flours, like you mentioned, Julie. Yeah, so I think it, what's important is that in our doughs that we made, we started with the flour and we added the yeast, which is obviously very important, and we'll talk about why it's so important. We added a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, which is also important for that yeast part of it, and then we added water. And then we let them rise. And so let's look at what the difference is. And, uh, show you guys. The, the bread flour is has this lovely, translucent yeah. you can start you can start to see how translucent it's bit it's starting to get but our the bread flour that we used here this king authors they actually even say i don't, I don't know if it's on your package no. i think it is right yep. so it, it says right there 12.7 percent mm -hmm. of gluten forming protein content nice so notice yep. it doesn't say 12.7 percent gluten uh because the gluten isn't in there yet and so right. gluten happens, that, that gluten is created when you knead the dough and you mix it with water. So yeah, what is gluten? So in our flour, there are protein molecules, glutenin and gliadine, uh, which are in the flour, move it around. Then you add water and knead the dough. And when you do that, the molecules bind, okay? And they start binding into these networks and you can form a network of these molecules all binding together, and that is the gluten network. That is the, the key ingredient to so many of our bread recipes, is that gluten. You can really see the effect of the gluten because yeah. instead of the beautiful window pane, what we're getting is like this very short crust, um, almost like shortbread cookie. Yeah, so I have all three uh, doughs. They actually do look surprisingly Kind of similar, but you're absolutely right. The bread dough, I could pull on it, it's elastic. The cake one gives a little bit of elasticity, but then it breaks, it crumbles. And then the gluten, more so, I can't even pull on it at all. Yeah. It just immediately kind of crumbles. You think a bag of flour is a bag of flour and it's just ground wheat, but there's always a little bit of barley. Some flours have soy, have, have soy in there. And what that soy flour does is it provides enzymes that actually help turn the, the, the baked good um, a brighter, a gleamier, a gleamier white, just, just as an aesthetic, aesthetic type, of, type of thing. So Kevin, did you roll out the gluten-free yet? Yeah, I, I rolled it right. out. Yeah. I more like, it's like squeezed it's like, it out. It's like Play-Doh almost. Right, kids love to squish it and squash it and roll it. So I would say, Mine is like my pretzel for the bread flour is really poofy so far. The cake flour is a little less puffy. Yes. And then my gluten-free one looks like Play-Doh. So we made the dough, which obviously the yeast is really important, and the gluten is obviously affecting our ability to actually form the pretzels and roll the dough out. But the next step of making a pretzel is not just to bake a pretzel, but to actually boil it in what we're gonna use is baking soda. So what that basic solution does is it actually reacts with the proteins and it breaks it into smaller building blocks, which are called amino acids. 
Those amino acids then, during the baking process, as it gets heated, react with sugars that are a part of the dough as well. And that reaction is the Maillard reaction, which gives us that brown color that we associate with pretzels. So we're gonna do 30 seconds on each side. Oh my gosh, my pretzel has literally fallen apart. The cake flour one's looking pretty good. I would say my cake flour one actually still has its shape of the pretzel better than the than the um, the other two are. Well, and it, it's, it's both taking up the water, but it's also um, the gas the gas bubbles that are inside the dough are starting yeah. to expand with the heat. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? <laughs> this is sort it's of a, my shape. Delicious. Um, it really does, to me, seem like what falls apart when I'm playing with Play-Doh, when Play-Doh starts to dry out. This is my bread flour one, so that one's super puffy, super puffy. Yeah. And this is my cake flour one, which actually looks the most like a pretzel still. This one just pooped up so much. This is the, uh, yeah, the gluten-free one. Just, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you're right. Yours I, looks like mine! <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's like that live free or die sort of cut up snake or something. It's, yeah. it's not looking good here. It's like a, it's like trying to sink a balloon underwater, right? Like, you have yeah. these gases inside the dough, which is gonna, gonna leaven, leaven it up, right? And like, have it float in the water. But I don't know about you guys, but my gluten-free one just like went to the bottom and stayed at the bottom like a brick. So I, I have a very yes. little faith. <laughs> start it, start it up here and we'll pull yep. it out. The, the other the other thing talking about gluten that's neat to do, and I, I have done this, is you can try to wash away the starch. Just keep on washing it and trying to wash away all of the starch so you're just left with the gluten network. And what you should see is that you have, compared to the cake flour, the bread flour, you're gonna have a larger little elastic ball thing at the end than your cake flour. I have, I have no idea what's gonna happen with the gluten. I'm, I'm starting to wash out the, the starch from the leftover gluten ball. There's a ton of starch in there. I don't know if you guys can yeah. really see that. Uh, yeah. But I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going to try to get that that last bit of gluten out of this. This is this could be made into seitan or something like that. This is a ball yeah. of protein wow. taken from taken from the taken from the the flour itself. All right, so I have all three of mine out of the oven now, and I will say. I am not winning the shaping of a pretzel award with my bread pretzel, but it does look really chewy. And when I pick it up, it's like, it's got that little bit of a give that you have with a pretzel with really soft that you're feeling on the inside. The cake flour one is definitely more um, dense. And then my gluten-free one, no rise whatsoever. And it's clearly not the shape. Yeah, the gluten-free <laughs> one is unremarkable. Like there is some steam in there, which is which is nice, but it's not. I don't know. It's it's probably not what we want. This is I, my. I'm not winning any shaping awards, but this is my bread. This is oh, my bread dough. That looks that looks so good. Oh, very nice. That looks um, very. That's so much better than mine. Is like it's so. Oh, it looks great. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it doesn't have the little holes in it at all. It's just like a big poofy mess. But it's I mean it's poofed. So it's it's good. Oh my goodness, oh, Kevin! That one looks Kevin. Yeah. Well done. Philly's, Philly's got it. Apparently. Philly represent. <laughs> I kind of love the way my my cake dough yeah. one looks. The cake dough yes. one. The cake dough one looks. The cake dough one looks to me more pretzel-y, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Totally. Like it just looks more like. Are we ready to taste test? Let's do All it. Right. Okay. What do we What do we want to start with? Should we start with the bread again? Starting yeah, with the mustard. Bread all right, we're starting with our highest gluten content. All of us with actually the same bread flour, but somehow they all look a little bit different from one another, so. Mm. They smell great. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that tear, that sort of like stretch mm -hmm. is exactly what you're going for. Yep, exactly. Oh, man. Gluten. It's like perfectly airy, but it's still, you have to like bite through the crust. All right, let's do cake flour. I gotta say, I'm still getting a bunch of stretch. Mine doesn't, mine is not, well, mine has some. Yeah, mine has some stretch. Mm. Not as much as my bread. Mm. 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 Mine not doesn't bad. taste as good. Yeah, mine's more dense. Like a, a I can taste the baking soda. I don't know. So I'm like wondering if like the baking soda, since it 
isn't re there aren't as many proteins on the outside for it to react with. So then yeah. the baking soda is sitting there. So then you're sort of getting that baking soda taste a little mm. bit even after the baking. Yeah, I was about to say, Julie, you found that the cake took longer to brown, the cake flour mm -hmm. one. So that suggests that, right, there's yep. just gonna be less flavor molecules. Exactly, um, so it's a little less pretzel flavor. Um, it doesn't, so but it doesn't taste like cake either. It is. Mm. It tastes like just a bad right. bread pretzel. <laughs> Mine's a little gummy too. Mm -hmm. Mine's a the gummy too. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely noticing the gumminess. Yeah. Should we try our gluten-free ones? Yeah. Yeah. So Have I cannot. I cannot hold up. When yeah. I did the other Mine, ones. They, I, they need support. Sort of crumbled they apart. Yes. Yeah. Crumble. So already crumbled. Not gonna stretch. I'd like to see your nice stretch, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this you did with your other. This is my biggest chunk. So I'll do oh. this one. Mine too. It's not. Yeah. You got a little stretch in there. Oh, it's gummy. Not the best texture. I agree with you, Julie. <laughs> At first bite, actually, the flavor is better it's, than the cake flour it's... one. I would say the flavor is more pretzel to me. It's a, it's I'd say, in terms of, in terms of it's... flavor of the bread, mm -hmm. I can definitely taste a lot more alcohol in this one than I did with the mm. did with the other ones. Mm. It, def it def definitely is pretty dense. Yes. Uh, yeah. But just as a point of comparison, like, yeah. So the the. Mm -hmm. That's your bread dough, and then the gluten free is just so, just a lot denser. Yeah. I kind of have to say, like, the cake flour isn't that bad. It's like, I was, I was expecting worse. Declan, uh, this is Julian Sudik. Can you say hi real quick? Hi. And we just made this pretzels using gluten free. They definitely broke. They definitely broke, yes. And we're <laughs> curious to see what do you think of their taste, okay? Are you ready? You can tell us what you think. I mean, I've never had gluten-free soft pretzels because there is none. Um, <laughs> they're pretty good. They're pretty good. All right, there you go. Would you Would you want? I would have to clean up the way they look, but would you be interested in me making more of these? Yeah. All right, there you go. Oh. There we go. Thank you, Declan. I can't tell you which one smelled the best because there was this lovely smell throughout the cooking and I don't know where it was coming from, uh, but uh, they all smelled great. And then the fact that gluten-free is hard. It is hard to cook uh, bakery products that are gluten-free. Gluten does a lot in our recipes that we don't think about from grabbing onto water molecules to creating this elasticity that then captures the air to contributing to the Maillard reaction and the browning of the surfaces. Uh, so it was really neat to see how difficult it was to cook good gluten-free pretzels. Um, but the part for me that was the most interesting was, um, sorry, science, is, science can be gross, um, is these guys, uh, these little puddles of gluten. It's rubbery, it's chewy, um, and this is sort of like the essence of, of what, what we're getting out of, out of the dough, right? Like it's not, this isn't dough, this is like chewing gum. Just thinking about how this combined with the starches and different flours, I don't know if you guys can see that, right? Can lead to sort of beautiful, beautiful projects like this. Um, it's kind of awe-inspiring. I think we also concluded that, you know, just subbing any random flour in a recipe is maybe not always the best idea. We saw it with pretzels today that flours are labeled particular things, maybe for particular reasons. Yeah, this has been great. Um, having a biologist and a physicist talk about what's going on in our kitchens doing chemistry. So, bye y'all. <laughs> yeah, bye y'all, take care. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with our biological nonsense. Thanks, <laughs> we had a lot of fun. <laughs>